When it comes to professional wrestling, people love to downplay these athletes. When you tell people that you're a wrestling fan, 9 times out of 10 they'll tell you, you know wrestling's fake, right? Now most of us know that wrestling's fake, and I'm sure there's a small audience of children who believe what they see is real. But what about when the worst thing imaginable happens? What happens when one of these athletes loses their lives? You can call pro wrestling fake as much as you'd like. But one thing that can't be denied is that there's a real element of danger in every match. Whether it was the kick that ended Bret Hart's career due to his post-concussion syndrome, or Triple H crushing his larynx in the very first elimination chamber, these men and women put their lives at risk for our entertainment. In this video we will be discussing the tragic death of La Parca. A lot of us know La Parca from his time in WCW, and there is some confusion on which La Parca it was that actually died. For those of you who don't know, there were actually two people who used the La Parca gimmick. So we will start with the history and the original man who used it. The original La Parca's name was Aldolfo Margarito Tapia Abrera. And the La Parca character was created by the AAA founder Antonio Pena. Antonio wanted a luchador who would wear a full body skeleton suit and would look like the Grim Reaper. He gave the character the name La Parca with a K, and which means the Reaper in Spanish. The character was created as a heel but quickly became a fan favorite. That was mainly due to Tapia's charisma. He would display great moves in the ring and would dance and would even play air guitar with the chair. He was destined for stardom right off the bat. His early years in AAA saw him win the WWA Light Heavyweight Championship and at AAA's biggest pay-per-view, Triple Mania, La Parca was chosen to wrestle at the WCW AAA shared pay-per-view called When Worlds Collide. This pay-per-view gave many Mexican wrestlers exposure here in the U.S. Some of the wrestlers who would appear on this pay-per-view was a young Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit the Pegasus Kid, and Rey Mysterio Jr. Shortly after this, these same Mexican wrestlers would make their way to the U.S. for good. La Parca was one of those men who joined ECW. During his short stint in ECW, he teamed with Psychosis for some great tag team matches. In 1996... WCW was poaching ECW for their talent, so we saw Eddie, Benoit, Mysterio, Psychosis, and La Parca all head to WCW, which all these men helped turn WCW into the success that it was. Because let's be honest, WCW was bloated with star power, but their mid-card and cruiserweights were the workhorses of that company. In WCW, La Parca would find his biggest success here in the US. He would mainly wrestle the other AAA talent that came with him from Mexico. But once again, he became a success here in the United States because of his humor and his charisma. There was even one story where WCW would dub over La Parca's promos to make it sound like he was speaking 70s jive. This might seem stupid now, but back then this was incredibly over. I still find it funny to this day. La Parca was also a member of Eddie Guerrero's Latino World Order in WCW. La Parca was also featured in video games like WCW Nitro and others. This period in La Parca's life was probably his greatest when it comes to international success. And it's because of this period that most of us know who he is. Eventually in 2000, La Parca had grown tired of the Russo era of WCW and left the company. And I don't blame La Parca for this move, honestly. A lot of former WCW wrestlers have complained about this period of WCW. We all know the history and how creative helped destroy the company, so we won't go any more into this. Back to La Parca. With his departure from WCW, he was in need of work. So La Parca would work the indies here in the US, and because of his notoriety, he was able to pull a decent living. Then in 2003, he would get an offer from the largest wrestling company in Mexico. That company was CMLL, which was also the biggest rival to AAA, who created the gimmick. Before La Parca joined CMLL, Antonio Pena did not have a problem with La Parca using the gimmick that he created. But when he saw him show up on his rival's show with the gimmick that he created, he was understandably pissed. So he took legal action against Tapia. Tapia didn't want to spend the money on a court battle just to use the gimmick that you can say he also co-created. Because Pena definitely came up with the idea, but Tapia made La Parca the character that everyone knew, and was the one to bring fame to it. But either way, he decided to make minor changes to the mask and the outfit, and went under the name L.A. Park, which stood for Authentica Parca. Now, with Pena in total control of the La Parca gimmick, he gave it to the person who had been 
La Parca Jr. in Mexico. That was Jesus Alfonso S. Caboza. So the new La Parca also had a successful run in Mexico. And then the big return that no one thought would happen actually happened. During the 2010 Ray de Reyes or King of Kings, the original La Parca LA Park returned to AAA after 13 years. With his return, he started a storyline feud with the imposter La Parca. During AAA's television taping on April 30th, 2010, LA Park accepted La Parca's challenge for a match at Triple Mania 18. At AAA's press conference on May 12, 2010, it was announced that the match between the two would be for the rights to the La Parca name. The two signed the official contract for the match during a television taping on May 19, 2010. After signing the contract, Dorian rolled in for piracy by impersonating La Parca. He was released just in time to run in during the semi-main event and to attack L.A. Park. At Triple Mania 18, L.A. Park faced La Parca in the main event of the show. Near the end of the match, Park used a tombstone pile driver move that is illegal in Lucha Libre. Joaquin Rowland, the president of AAA, entered the ring, right when L.A. Park attempted to use a steel chair on La Parca. When L.A. Park teased using the chair on Joaquin instead, Dorian entered the ring to protest, but was pushed down by Park, who then hit Joaquin with the chair, which caused Dorian to turn on him, hitting him with a steel chair three times. Halloween and Damien666 from the Perros de Mal wrestling promotion ran into the ring to chase Dorian Roland away. They then drug L.A. Park on top of La Parca so the referee could give a three count, giving L.A. Park the victory over La Parca. La Parca was taken from the ring on a stretcher, not having moved since L.A. Park applied the pile driver. A bit later, it was announced that the match results had been thrown out due to interference by Los Perros de Mal. But the following morning, it was confirmed that Tapia had indeed won and would now be known as La Parca once again. And Triple A's La Parca would have to change his name. But due to interference, we should have already known that we are in for some bullshit. On June 10th, AAA announced that it would respect Mexico City Boxing and Wrestling Commission's decision to throw out the match, and as a result, both La Parca and L.A. Park would keep their names. Of course, right? And on July 4th, La Parca defeated L.A. Park again in a rematch. Now, with both men in AAA and their big feud over, La Parca had fallen out of popularity because sadly he would always be in the shadows of L.A. Park. During this time, La Parca would wrestle in the indie scene in Mexico and would still make appearances in AAA, but he would not find the success that he had before. Eventually, he had began working for a Mexican promotion called Chaos Lucha Libre. The company was relatively new but was able to attract big stars in Mexico like Blue Demon Jr. and Octagon. It was in this promotion that La Parca would wrestle his final match. During a show on October 21, 2019, La Parca was wrestling in a match with L.A. Park and another luchador named Rush. Rush and his partner were thrown to the outside of the ring, where both L.A. Parca and La Parca were to dive outside of the ring onto their opponents. La Parca missed Rush completely and ended up hitting his head on the metal barrier. Rush immediately knew something was wrong and went to go check on La Parca. The match did continue with L.A. Park taking on Rush's partner. Eventually, the audience figured out what was going on and the match came to a stop. First responders came and got him up on a stretcher and he was immediately rushed to the hospital. Now, it was believed that the impact paralyzed him immediately. La Parca underwent surgery to relieve some of the pressure on his neck and his brain. The local presses had falsely reported that La Parca had died, but this wasn't the case. La Parca actually died three months later on January 11th, 2020. La Parca's legacy lives on and even L.A. Park said out of respect he would never use the La Parca name. Dave Meltzer even wrote that La Parca was a key part of the AAA presentation, which is so very true. In Mexico, La Parca's masks are some of the best-selling luchador masks, right up there with Rey Mysterio and Blue Demon Jr. La Parca was also inducted into the AAA Hall of Fame. There's a whole generation out there who will remember that mask, and when they see it, they will remember the good years of WCW. That mask is truly iconic, and I really hope he rests in peace. And as a tribute here, we will list his championships and some of his accomplishments. In DDT Pro Wrestling, La Parca was an Ironman heavyweight champion, and in AAA, he was a GPCW Super X Monster champion, a Mexican National Atomicos champion, and two-time Mexican National Cruiserweight champion. 
a two-time Mexican national tag team champion, and a King of Kings winner in 2001, 2003, 2005, 2007, and 2014. It is hard to see anyone lose their lives just to entertain us. That is why I feel these athletes should be treated with a little more respect than what's given to them. You can call it sports entertainment, but at the end of the day, the risk is real. Thank you for watching this video, and I wanted to let you know that I did create a Twitter in case you guys wanted to reach out to me and chat with me about wrestling, or stay up to date on what new videos are going to be made and when they drop. I will also let all my followers know what videos are being worked on, but since my Twitter is new, I will let you guys know. There will be a WrestleMania Backlash video that's in the works right now, and after that, if you have any videos that you want to see, please let me know in the comments. And this is a new channel, so if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. La Parca, rest in peace, and we'll see you guys on the next video.